Hello everybody, Reggie Regos here again from Keller Williams Real Estate, your trusted realtor. Hey, listen, uh, today I have with me John Boylan and John is from Stone and Boylan Associ and Associates LP. He's actually my CPA and I'm gonna be interviewing him today. Welcome, John. Uh, good to see you again, Reggie. Good to thanks see for you. having me. No, thanks for being here, I appreciate your time. So John, let's just get started. Why don't you describe your business for me? What sure. Uh, we're a full service accounting firm. We can handle all of your bookkeeping needs, your payroll needs, tax preparation, okay. uh, business consulting. We do audit and attestation work, which okay. means if you need your financial statements built or mm -hmm. your company to get audited, okay. we can handle all of that. Wow, that's fantastic. Full service. Yes, sir. Full, that's full service. service. Anything and everything. It. I love it. Okay. Now, uh, what made you to decide to open this business? Well, I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, and I kind of wanted to go out on my own and just um, experience the being your own boss. Uh, mm -hmm. I got tired of working for other people, having them dictate you have to do this, do that. I wanted to do this for myself. I want to work for myself. I want to make my own hours. I want to make myself happy. And yes. the way to do that is to service the clients that um, make you happy. That's right. I don't want to be told what to do anymore. And yeah. I just said, I'm done. I want to start my own practice. Yeah. Same reason I'm in real estate, actually, because I can serve my clients the way I want to serve them, which is at the highest level. Oh, obviously, <laughs> obviously. obviously. <laughs> so, John, how'd you get started? Well, um, my father was an accountant. Um, I took a few classes in high school, and I kind of liked them. Okay. And eventually, I got time to go to college. So I said, we well, got to pick a major. Let's stick with accounting. Yeah. Um, I did it through school, and I kind of enjoyed it. And I got out. Um, I started working and I found that I really enjoy it. I, I just wow. like doing it. Yeah. So um, I just stuck. Yeah. yeah. But I started at home, uh, saw what my dad did and kind of went from there. I love it. You know, we need people like you because I hate accounting. <laughs> <laughs> you know so what? I need people that love it. <laughs> I get it. 98% of people think that it is an awful industry. Yeah. How could you ever do it? I like it. I so it. the 2% of us that like it, uh, come see us. Yeah, Stone exactly. Boylan and Associates. I yeah. love it. <laughs> now, I guess I kind of got the answer to this. Um, it, you can add anything else you want to it, but why did you choose this profession? Well, um, so I basically chose it because uh, I needed to pick something. Like coming out of high school, I really had no idea what I wanted. I wanted to be a major league baseball player, but that wow. just that didn't pan out for okay. one reason or another. Okay. <laughs> and you got to pick something. Yeah. And I, I was just fortunate enough that the major I picked, I actually enjoy doing. I love it. I yeah. love it. Now, what drives you to do what you do? What motivates you to do this? Uh, I would say financial freedom at this point. I don't want a mortgage payment. I don't want a car payment. I don't want student loan payments. I don't want my wife to have any of that debt. And I sure as heck don't want my daughter to either. Um, and that's kind of, some of our clients are the same way. And you could kind of help guide them to that direction. And uh, it's fulfilling to watch them fulfill their dreams. Yeah. They tell me what their goals are. And I can't do it for them, but right. I could give them consulting advice and help them get there. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's great, John. That's great. <laughs> And now, so what surprised you most about owning a business? <laughs> uh, that's an easy one to answer. On top of doing my normal job, I also have a full-time job of owning a business. Yes. Like the internet goes down. Guess who's fixing it? You want clients? You got to advertise for yes. clients. You uh, you got to have a building. You got to pay the rent. You got insurance. All the other stuff that I'm actually advising on people. Now I'm doing, doing it. it. It's amazing. It's a second full-time job. Yes. But when it's your baby, you love it, and it's uh, it's such an easy task. You go, you work even harder. Yeah, uh, you do what you have to do. Exactly. Right, to make it live. Yeah, That's but right. that did, that shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So what was it like when you first started? Well, 15 years ago was um, a different time. Um, there was actually a whole different tax code. The tax code was updated last year. So... The last 15 years, um, there's been subtle changes and then drastic changes last year. Um, right. Everything from new tax form to literally new law. So oh, quite a bit has changed over quite the years. Change. Okay. And what's something people don't know about your business? Uh, we're there year round. How's mm -hmm. that for starters? Yeah. Um, a lot of people get the conception, oh, they're just there for tax season. It's true. Not true. I mean, any business out there, Every day, it doesn't matter if it's June 1st, September 15th, or January 20th, uh, you could have a problem, uh, a tax problem. Um, do I hire that new employee? 
Uh, should I buy that new piece of equipment? Yes. My sales don't seem to be jiving here. We're there. We help yeah. you with these problems year round. Um, and that's kind of what we do. Yeah. We do a lot more consulting. The tax return is really the uh, byproduct. It's the right. last part of your business for the year. But the first nine and a half, 10 months, it's nothing but making sure your business is profitable. Yeah, you know, that's great insight because that that's one of the things that I learned that you don't wait until, you know, the year, oh, the, the end of the no. year. You gotta be proactive. So proactive that, yeah. throughout. Tax returns are reactive. Yeah, exactly. You gotta be proactive through the year. Exactly, okay. Now, what would your customers say they love most about your business? Uh, probably client service, I would think. I mean, if I'm being honest, a lot of them like the tax savings they get out of, of us, course. but the uh, the service, I would think, and the attention to detail. Mm. We get clients in and we are not in H&R Block. We do not return your taxes the very next day or that day. We need to review them and kind of help guide you, ask you questions, figure out what if anything is being missed, but we are looking to service you and help you. It's not just here it is, do it, do right. it, do it. No, there's, let's look at this. Let's make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah. So attention to detail. Yeah, I bet in your business, especially the way you're running it, it's about relationship. Oh, for sure, right? yeah. You gotta have trust. Exactly. And that's what's great about owning your own business too. Like you either get along with someone or you don't. Yeah. And if you don't, uh, it's not gonna work out. Exactly. But the people that you get along, uh, there's a trust relationship and the clients really become more of friends at the end yeah, of the day. Exactly. And that is fun because you're going to work with your friends every day. Exactly. Uh, can you ask for anything? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the same in my business. That is one of the keys that it's about relationship. If you don't make it about relationship, if it's, if it's more transactional, it doesn't really work. Right. But when it's about Agreed. relationship, it makes it work. Agreed. So I'm glad you have that. So what are your greatest challenges? Uh, our greatest challenge is uh, probably time management. We squeeze a lot of work in January through April. Yeah. So if you don't go into this thing with a, um, a schedule yes. and an idea of what you're doing, you're gonna get eaten alive. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, time management, yeah. because every day brings a new challenge. Yeah. Uh, you think you're going to work to do something, someone calls with an emergency, yes. you're sidetracked. You gotta keep your work and life in balance as well too. Exactly. Like you come home, you gotta you have a life to leave. That's so right, uh, exactly. time management for sure. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm just going through the questions yeah, here. Sure. Okay. So now what's something most people don't know about you? What is something that most people don't know about me? I enjoy what I do. Okay. Um might be a, a corny answer, but uh I like going to work every day. So I am crazy enough that if I'm doing your taxes I, I like it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and uh, let me ask you this. What are some of the highest highs you've had in life so far? Uh, that's pretty easy. Um, I got married okay. to my lovely wife, Molly, and uh, we had a daughter, Emma. I, that's that's the best thing that's ever happened to me in life, um, which is... Right like, answer. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's yeah. not really work-related. Yeah. It's life. Uh, work is just the... Something to do to pay the bills. Exactly, yeah. exactly, I gotcha. Now, what are some of the lowest lows you've had in life so far? And what kind of got you through? Well, I gotta be honest, I've been very fortunate throughout my life. That's not a, I don't have an answer to that one. Um, okay. I'd like to attribute that to, you work hard, yeah. you live within your means, yeah. um, don't overextend yourself, right. and I guess some good luck along the way too. That that I've been very fortunate that I don't have to answer that question. That's good. I love yeah. it. Now, what what's the most memorable experience you've had working with a customer? Oh gosh, <laughs> there are literally a bunch of them. Yeah, a lot of them. Um, I've saved people thousands of dollars over the years. Mm. Um, to get kind of beyond the realm of that, I did have a customer that came to me for advice. John, do I buy the business or do I buy the stock? Ah. And I said, dude, you gotta buy the business assets. You don't wanna buy the stock. Right. Well, he did that and lo and behold, had he bought the stock, this was like within a, a month or so, yeah. there was a huge lawsuit from the prior company where had he bought the stock, he yeah. would have lost everything. Wow. But because we advised him, you buy the business assets and not the stock, it was the other person's problem. Yeah. And uh, that literally, he would have been out of business within a month. Exactly. So, oh, and then how about this for a recent example? Uh, someone was gonna have to um, get deported mm -hmm. if they didn't file their tax returns. 
person came here, they had a very successful business. Yeah. They didn't realize they had to file tax returns. They got notices and uh, had they not filed three years of tax returns right. within a couple of months, they were gone. Well, wow. we, we dropped everything and we made sure to keep got that, that get them the work done to keep them in the country. Nice, I love it. Yeah. Okay. We're almost done here. Just have a couple other things. Um, what does the future hold for you, John? Uh, that I, I don't know I, is the right answer to say I've never really stopped to think about it. I'm so caught up with trying to get ahead and, and yeah. just finish um, getting that financial freedom we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, after that, I think I'll sit down and think, what do I want to do next? Gotcha. Um, but I want that financial freedom to start. That's your goal. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Now, in terms of um, like real estate and taxes. What's some things you could suggest to us or, or a scenario you could talk about? Okay, um, let's start with this. So uh, one of the things I encounter quite a bit is uh, a lot of young couples, uh, they end up having kids. Yeah. Someone had a starter home. So a lot of times they want to keep that as an investment property. Yeah. And uh, the first thing they'll say is, okay, we're going to try and rent it. Like what kind of expenses do we have? Right. And what really gets overlooked a lot is it's not just what you bought that property for in the beginning. Mm -hmm. If you've been there three years, chances are you've done quite a bit of work to it. Right. Uh, you might've put a new roof on, you could have paved your driveway, you could have put an addition on, you could have a uh, new refrigerator. Yeah. Well, all of that money that you've spent, that gets depreciated. You get to count mm -hmm. that as an expense. Yeah. Um, a lot of times that gets missed by a lot of other accountants That's out there. True. You gotta almost put a list together of every single nickel you've put into that house, yes. and then we will end up finding a way to write it off. I love that. Yeah, yeah it saves people <laughs> I love money. Saving and it's, money. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a fun list for people to go back and say, oh my gosh, I spent this and this yes. and this. and. It's almost a sense of pride, like it's gonna pay off. I, I spent a lot of money and now it's gonna pay off. Yeah, exactly. Wow, well listen, John, this has been great. I really appreciate it. Thank you, I know you've given a lot of value to a lot of people. Today. Oh, thank you so much for having me.